You are watching Fugitive Red Eye, and once again, I am doing my playthrough of Conker's Bad Fur Day. This is part two, where we're going to go through the Barn Boys chapter. The Barn Boys chapter is an interesting chapter, actually. Um, as a kid, there was a part that I always skipped because I didn't want my parents to see it, the uh, Sunny Days part, which I, will st which I will do on this playthrough. And you'll see why, as a little kid, I didn't want my parents to see it. Oh yeah, I gotta mute the TV so that it doesn't pick up that echoey shit again, my apologies. There we go. Alrighty. So, now the game audio should be a little bit better in this video than it was in the last. Um, but as far as that goes, these signs thing, she says just follow the signs, right? And she said they were nasty wasps, so you gotta follow the nasty sign. If this were live and reloaded, however, it would just show a picture of a wasp on the sign instead of saying nasty or nice. It would, say, it would show wasps and bees. Because I guess they figured people couldn't uh, decipher that the whole nasty, nasty wasps thing and then follow the signs. I don't know. This level is actually one of the easiest to do, I feel, except for this part here because I've never had that problem before. But right there where I was recording, I fell like a jackass. But actually carrying this beehive is actually one of the easiest things to do. I don't know how you could possibly fail at it. However, I have seen someone fail at it. Uh, I, had a, I have a cousin who I let play this, and uh, he failed at it miserably. Then again, he doesn't really play games that much because he's got really restrictive parents, but uh, he was pretty bad. Then I've got another cousin who's actually really good at it and only a few years older. And uh, But that's because he's good at games in general. But um, as far as that goes, this part's really hard to lose at in my opinion. I mean, you just keep walking and they can't hit you. It's pretty easy. Just watch, it's pretty simple. I mean, if you've ever had problems with it, I don't know why you would. Just avoid that yellow patch there, because otherwise they will get you. I mean, this part's a little bit more irritating in Live and Reloaded if you haven't already killed the imps, because uh, those imps will get in the way, but since there's no imps in Bad Friday in this part, uh, it's not that bad. Um, and in Live and Reloaded, it's really not that bad either, as long as you kill the imps. So yeah, I, I love how this bee has like all these weaponry inside of her beehive, and somehow she was still able to lose it. I mean, if she has these defenses, how do those wasps keep getting the fucking hive? Also, this tagline, eat lead, mother buzzer, that uh, was also used in the uh, trailer for uh, uh, Live and Reloaded. Uh, different context, but yeah. <clears throat> This game really does deserve a true sequel, but, uh, probably never going to happen. On the plus side, at least Platonic's making Ukulele to be the spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie. If only we could get another Conker, though. And another true Banjo-Kazooie, that'd be nice, too. Hell, even another Donkey Kong, but, uh, then again, you know, Rare's no longer with Nintendo. Although, I have heard that, uh, Nintendo and Microsoft have made an agreement to let Rare release games on Nintendo again, so... Here's hoping that they go back to their roots, at least to a degree. But as far as that goes, with Platonic forming, you know, Rare doesn't have a lot of its old members, too, so it's hard to say. But, uh, Conker's the game that really, you know, got me into Rare, and really got me into gaming a lot in general. I mean, this game is one of the most memorable games I've played. I'd do a flashbacks episode on it, and I probably will, but... Uh, the point is, I'm doing this playthrough now, so that kind of suffices for that. I love this, these beetles just want to kick the shit out of you, as soon as they see you. But of course, uh, it's censored as fuck in Live and Reloaded, so, you know, you don't hear them say shit, it's just, I'm gonna kick the beep out of this bastard, because for some reason, Live and Reloaded was more censored, even though it was originally going to be live and uncut. But, uh, I digress, that's, you know, just something that happened. It's me again. Oh, this, uh, this here. When he, uh, when he asks you if you have any Mepsi Pox, that's another inside joke at Rare. Apparently the guy named Beardy who worked at Rare, uh, he, uh, really liked Pepsi Max, and, uh, Mepsi Pox is a spoonerism of Pepsi Max, so... Yeah. You just swap the first two letters of each, or the first letter of each word. But, uh, I didn't get that as a kid, because, you know, they don't expect you to. It's an inside joke. But Rare has a lot of those in their games. And you gotta love them for it. Also have a lot of innuendo in their kid games, like uh, in Banjo-Kazooie, how there's Jolly's Juice, and uh, Semen Surprise. So, you know, there's all sorts of stuff hidden in their child-friendly games. But this is not a child-friendly game, this is overt about everything, so that's why I love it. But anyways, yeah, that B part was pretty easy. Now the, uh, 
uh, catapult or slingshot, depending on... Because they actually call it a catapult in England, which I didn't know, at least in some regions that I've heard. But uh, the slingshot in this game is actually the same slingshot that you had in Pocket Tales. So, you know, and you shoot conkers just like you do in Pocket Tales. Only unlike Pocket Tales, this game uh, doesn't uh, require you to pick up conkers. You have an unlimited supply because context sensitive. Um, these beetles, um, they're pretty easy. Um, on Live and Reloaded, it's even easier because there's a crosshair you have to aim the slingshot, so... But yeah, um, if you go to Pooh Cabin, uh, before you go to the, um, Barn Boys, it'll have a sign on the door that says back at 10, which on Live and Reloaded will have a picture of a clock that says 10 instead. I didn't do that on this playthrough just because, uh, I just went straight to the Barn Boys, but if you do go to Pooh Cabin first and then go to, uh, Barn Boys, the first set of cash you get in Barn Boys, Conker will look at his watch and say, um, oh, 10 o'clock, oh yeah, I remember, and then you can go to Pooh Cabin. But instead, I'm gonna do all the Barn Boys first and then go to Pooh Cabin, rather than, uh, you know, going to Pooh Cabin in the middle of the Barn Boys, because, you know, that way I'm doing a chapter per video. Other than Windy, because it is the hub world, so, um, you know. But yeah, um... As far as that goes, uh, the Barn Boys is another level, like I said, pretty simple. Um, again, there was a level on it uh, I did not uh, play whenever my parents were home when I was a kid because I didn't want them knowing that there was a sex scene between a bee and a sunflower, uh, which you will see later in the video. Um, again, I love how the professor is looking at this like it's some sort of huge metaphysical question. And... Uh, He's just now realizing there's a gap. And of course, the teddies um, are references to Nazis, with uh, him being their Hitler in uh, in Live and Reloaded, because he even has a whole Hitler getup and legs and stuff um, in the prequel chapter of Chapter X. <coughs> Conquer getting medieval was going to be like a medieval take on you know the characters from Live and Reloaded's multiplayer. But it was going to be a multiplayer-only game, so part of me is glad it didn't get made. Part of me is not, because it would have at least been another Conquer game, even though Greg would have been the main focus and Conquer would have been a guest. I love when I was a kid. I had an argument uh, with one of my friends. He, I, I said that this guy talks funny, right? Uh, I see you, I see you, little fella. I don't know. I thought that was too uh, cliched and obviously fake. He told me, "Well, people really talk like that. You're just being stupid." And I'm like, "Okay, whatever." I don't know. I remember the the fact that, uh, I don't know, but yeah, anyways, so this part's pretty easy again, uh, it's not that difficult to do, you just gotta go collect the cheese for the mouse, so, uh, you gotta go through here, obviously, um, there's actually a ten lives tail, uh, back in there where the cheese is, I'm not gonna grab it yet, because, um, I haven't died yet, at least at this point in the video, so, um, until I die, there's no point in me going to the secret 10 lives thing, but if I don't do it in this video, I'll do it, uh, with the bonuses once I wrap up the playthrough, because I'm gonna actually, uh, go on and show a bunch of bonuses, like all the cheat codes and anything like that. I'm not using any cheat codes currently, although when I get to the war chapter, I'm most likely gonna use the 50 lives cheat, just because the countdown part, I die quite a bit every playthrough, so there's that. But, uh, until I get there, I probably won't be using any cheats, except for maybe on the part where you have to swim through the fan blades, I might also use a 50 lives cheat, just because I hate having to start over from a game over. But at the moment, no cheats. And no deaths yet. But again, the video's still young, and I haven't, uh, recorded any gameplay, uh, later yet where I have died yet. But, uh, again, I do record these in, uh, smaller increments, because I'm using, uh, Upload Studio, so... By the time I actually, uh, do die... It will probably be in this video. I'm guessing I'll make it until the uh, slam dunk part, and then I'll probably fall at some point. But I'll try to make it past there as well. And if uh, if I can make it to Spooky without dying, I'm wondering if Greg will say something different. I'm hoping he does, because he says, oh, you again, when you meet him in Spooky. But if you haven't met him by dying in the first place, I wonder if there's some sort of hidden dialogue that, uh, you know, since you've never met him before. I doubt it, but, you know, it'd be interesting to see if there was. Anyway, so here I go. I'm just going to go give this uh, cheese to the mouse again.
Now this mouse part, as in most old Nintendo games, especially rare games, you have to feed him three pieces of cheese, because three was like a nut lucky number back then to do anything, so give him three pieces of cheese, and he's too stupid to realize that uh, he's eaten way too much. Also, it's pretty ridiculous what the cheese does once you give him the third piece. But, uh, you'll see that in just a moment, because I'm just about to go grab the third piece. Um, I think, I, I think it's odd how those safes are trying to kill you, whereas, uh, Bert and, uh, Jack are trying to help you, or at least they claim to be. But again, uh, then again, Jack sent you into the barn with the, uh, hay that, I don't know, it doesn't make any sense. I wonder if, like, that whole thing is an inside joke or what, I don't know. Because again, Rare is loaded with inside jokes. But yeah, um... This game... Good game. I know I'm being repetitive and whatnot, but you know... I don't know, commentary's hard to do. But uh, yeah, this mouse, boom. It's pretty gross when you think about it. See? Blew up. Looks kind of like watermelon, doesn't it? I don't know. <clears throat> Another thing, in Live and Reloaded, Conker has shorts. I guess they figured they wanted to give him pants in Live and Reloaded because he runs around with none on. Anyway, this is the part, uh, if you get this far, um, after going to Pooh Cabin, and then you get the cash that I'm about to grab on top of the barn, that will, uh, let you go to Pooh Cabin. And Conker will look at his watch and say, uh, oh, 10 o'clock. Oh, yeah, I remember. Which is funny, because one of my favorite things he does when he's bored, because if you stand around for a long time, Conker gets bored and starts doing stuff. One of my favorite things he does when he's bored is he'll, uh, pull out his watch and say, nope, I still can't tell time. But yeah, this cash, once you grab it, you can go to Pooh Cabin. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to play through all the barn boys in this video, so... I actually had a Conker plush that actually talked and would say stuff like that. But uh, the voice box in it's broke, so um, it doesn't talk no more. And we removed it to fix it, but um, we lost it, so he still doesn't talk. But uh, it's the war uh, Conger plush. I don't know. <clears throat> the one from Live and Reloaded. But anyway, once you go inside this barn, there's all these... Uh, haystacks or whatever that, uh, for whatever reason, I, I really don't get this part. Is this supposed to be some sort of inside joke? Like, he's like, I was told there was something real neat inside this barn, and then they're like, this is pretty neat. So, I, I don't fucking know. You'll see what I'm talking about. I don't get it. It's, I don't know, maybe I'm just not getting it. Maybe it's just whiz whizzing past me. If you get it, leave a comment below, because I really don't. Unless it's not supposed to be a joke, and it's not supposed to make sense. Because, I mean, they don't attack you or anything. But, um, Frankie the Pitchfork does, which, uh, we'll see in just a moment. Anyway, but, um, yeah... Like I said, we're going to head over to Frankie the Pitchfork. Uh, they want to kick my ass for some reason, but uh, that's just what they do. Hey, Frankie. I think there's a little fellow over there. just coming in through the door. I think it's your turn to kick his ass. Is, is it his turn? Yeah, yeah, I say it was his turn. Yeah, Frankie, go and kick his ass. Go on, go on, kick his ass. I ain't kicking me. But it's, that, it's always my turn to kick my asses. Frank, just get over there and kick his ass, Frankie, for f***ing sake. Yeah, yeah, go over there and kick his ass. Somebody's gotta kick his ass. It ain't gonna be me. I'm a, I'm a brush. Yeah, you don't kick ass. Well, I'm a paintbrush anyway. The paint, paintbrush, paintbrush and pot, um... <laughs> They never say their names in the game, but I can't remember where I read this, but, uh, the paint pot's name is Reg. Not that anyone cares, but I read that somewhere. So, there's that for you. Anyway, so, as we go, now we're gonna go fight Frankie the Pitchfork and kill these haystacks for no particular reason. So, yeah.
Anyway, so like I said, now we're going to go fight Frankie the Pitchfork. And uh, this fight uh, just kind of comes out of nowhere, and uh, that's just how it goes. But uh, it is what it is. Just a redneck protecting his damn property. Sorry, I don't really know what else to say about the, that whole cutscene there. There's not really a lot of insight into that, uh, other than I don't know if I mentioned this already, but the uh, paint pot and the paintbrush is never really said in the game. I believe I did say this, but uh, their names are uh, Red. Uh, his name is Red for the paint pot, or at least that's what I've heard. I don't know how official that is, but uh, that's what I heard. I also heard the money's name is Fajo, but uh, again, I don't know how uh, reliable that is. Um, I can't even remember where the hell I heard it. But yeah, this little guy's a pain in the ass to kill, no matter what. Um, so, the sooner you get that out of the way, the better, which is what I'm trying to do here. But, uh, I didn't, so now I'm going to do it here. Except I hit Frankie there, so I didn't do it there either, but... Should get it here. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Anyway, so there's that. Uh, like I said, you just gotta kill all these haystacks, and then you can squish all their eyebrow eyeballs if you want, which, uh, something I frequently did as a kid, and I thought was, I always did it every time I squished all the eyeballs as a kid. Don't know why, but they follow you around if you don't, it's kind of creepy. But anyway, uh, once you fight Frankie, he gets all depressed, and his friends are like, yeah, you should kill yourself. Also, uh, the paint pot, his kid's lines. He's one of the few characters that is always censored when he says shit. Actually, it's not few. There's quite a few characters that do. But uh, in the Great Mighty Pooh level, it's not censored. And in, with certain characters, it's not. I, I don't get it. I, I don't get what their angle was on their censorship. I mean, maybe it's the context. But at the same time, I don't know. Maybe it's okay as a noun. But then again, it's used when it is used as a noun as well. Sometimes it's still... I don't fucking know. Whatever. Uh, I wish Uncut had got finished, but uh, if you actually watch some of the beta builds of the game, there's certain lines that, uh, if we're uncensored, wouldn't make any sense because they don't actually say what you think they're saying. Like when the guy's taking a shit behind a rock and he says there's nothing quite like a good shit. Well, if you actually uncensor it, he says there's nothing quite like a good ass, so it doesn't make any sense. But anyways, um, now Frankie's hanging up there and we gotta go get him down, but, uh, gotta open the barn first. Um, to do that we gotta pull the lever by the door. These games, they didn't explain to you what to do, but Conquer was one of the ones that was more self-explanatory. A little bit easier to get than, say, Banjo-Kazooie. Um, again, not Rare Games... Uh, they, they expected a lot more from gamers back then. They, they expected you to have some sort of, uh, you know, reasoning skill, skills. So, you know, you had to figure shit out for yourself. I mean, the lever's self-explanatory, but then again, there's certain parts that you just gotta kinda know what to do. Um, that B, again, is part of the chapter, which, uh, we'll be getting to briefly, that as a kid I would skip frequently so that, uh, my parents wouldn't see it, but, uh, that's just what that was. This is my favorite, this is my favorite line in the game, or one of them, anyway. Um, right here, t um, not, not the first line he says when he's like, my nemesis is defeated, but what he says right after. Um, not, not, uh, it's me again either, but just... Listen to how menacing this sounds, what he says he's going to do. Yes, it's me again. I'm going to be quiet so you can hear him. Right. Time to wander around aimlessly. Do you know anyone else who can say time to wander around aimlessly in a more menacing tone? Because if you do, I'd love to meet them. Now for this bum bee who's uh, trying to have sex with a sunflower because, you know, pollination. But yeah, um, as far as that goes, I don't know. The bees, they're, what, uh, they, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to say right now, so uh, maybe I'll just be quiet for another couple of little periods of time or something. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Cutscenes. Gotta love them. I love Conker's cutscenes. One of the things that made the game. But nowadays you don't focus as much on the cutscenes as you do on the gameplay, and it's a shame. 
Uh, Alrighty then, uh, as we continue on, uh, like I said, we'll get to this B eventually, but first, we're gonna cut uh, Frankie down and fight the Haybot. Because, uh, I don't know, just wanna do that first. But, yeah. Anyway. That's the flower over there, which, like I said, we will get to interfrastically, but, uh, yeah. She's a sunflower. Hey, there's no need to get offensive now. <laughs> I love how everyone just wants Conquer to solve, it, solve all their problems here. And Conquer's just a dick who only wants money. That's what sets this apart from uh, other rare games. I mean, yeah, everyone always wants favors in all the rare games, but they give you rewards and collectibles and shit, but, uh... Conquer's just in it for the money, and he couldn't give a shit less what happens to anybody. Doesn't care what side he's on, who he's helping, nothing. But that's the charm of him. He's a real bastard, and that's why you gotta love him. Like Mark Hamill. Or Bruce Campbell. <clears throat> Which reminds me, unrelated thing, Ash vs. Evil Dead Season 1 was kick-ass. I can't wait till Season 2. I'm actually really pissed that I have to wait until October. At least I assume it'll be October since the last season started in October, but I digress. This is about Conquer. Um, anyway, so I burned the first bat here, but I'm actually just gonna skip the rest just to show that it's a lot easier and quicker if you just skip them. Uh, I have burned them all before, but it's just easier to do that. <clears throat> this part is also easier in Live Reloaded because there's a crosshair that you can aim at the rope, but uh, if you just get it right there and throw three, it should cut him down. Okay, four. Yeah, four. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> now, uh, this part was actually a little bit different uh, before the game was released. Uh, something that uh, Rare took out because Nintendo uh, would have uh, had a fucking heyday with this. So, originally, this line here, hold on a second. The reason I jumped down like that is because when I first played it, I did that and I thought, Oh, is he calling me a dumb shit for jumping down like that or for cutting him down? I was unclear as a kid. So, yeah. But anyway, as far as that goes, uh, this line here, Frankie's gonna say in just a moment. He's gonna say something like, uh, it was one of them that, like, one of them their executions you hear about. But apparently, in a, uh, talk that Rare was having at one point, they actually said it was gonna be, uh, one of them their lynchings they talked about, and those hoods were originally white, as in the clan. Uh, for obvious reasons, Nintendo cut that out. Uh, and I'm kinda glad they did, because, uh, that would have got Rare quite a bit of hate, I'd imagine. And, uh, Rare doesn't need that. Rare was a great company and made great games. I understand it was satire, and I would have got it, at least nowadays. Back then, I wouldn't have. But, uh, I can take satire now. But, uh, a lot of people can't, so... Probably a wise decision that Nintendo didn't let them have that line. But, yeah. Um, the paint pot and the brush, I really do like those characters, just because... I don't know, I, I like the whole, uh, I already said that, shut up. <laughs> but yeah, um, as far as this part goes, uh, the Haybot, uh, you know, he's kind of a bastard after the second hit, he just turns around and, uh, he can hit you. So, just gotta be careful, Keep, take your time and kill his ass, there's chocolate all around the barn, so... If something like, go say, this, where I'm about to get hit, were to happen, then uh, you could avoid it. Or you can heal from it. Also, if you jump, you can avoid his hits, as I just demonstrated there. <clears throat> Off, you asshole. Love the Terminator references here. Also, another good thing, Terminator Genesis kicked ass, too. I don't know if you saw it, but... Uh, I would highly recommend it. I mean, obviously I don't know if you saw it, because I don't know who else is watching this. Probably no one. But, uh, I digress. Once more. Anyway, so yeah, now I'm gonna go hit the hay bot. Hit the hay bot. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, there that is, and, uh, we'll keep going until we beat this fucking bastard. So, uh, yeah, here we go. We're on Frankie, and we're gonna attack the Haybot again. Here we go. 
Oh, fuck. Alrighty then. So, anyway, this should, uh, take care of him. At least this phase of the fight, of course, so... Uh, we're in for more in just a moment. <clears throat> Again, this is, um... The Haybot Wars fight now, uh... Which, again, is a reference to the Terminator. They even have the Terminator theme song here, or at least a very, very close parody of it. Which I think is pretty awesome. That's the one thing I loved about Conker's Bad Fur Day, is it was just loaded with movie references. Anyway, but, um, yeah, here's the next phase of the fight, where you fight the Haybot in his robot form. And he has his, uh, missiles, the Suzy 9mm. Anyone else notice that, uh, the design for the Haybot looks very similar to the design for the Great Mighty Pooh? Or as he's known in the game manual, the Beast of Pooh Mountain, even though that's clearly not what he calls himself, and that's not what I've known him as. But yeah, um, the Great Mighty Pooh kind of looks like him, doesn't it? Other than it's a robot and not a big pile of shit. Also, if you want to avoid the missiles, um, I actually didn't do this this time because, uh, I didn't think of it right away, but it's actually best not to get on Frankie until you're safely behind the pillar, because, uh, the missiles can't hit you when you're walking around on the ground like this, see? But, uh, I forgot to do that, so I got hit the first time. But, uh, anyways, you gotta get behind these pillars and, uh, let two missiles hit it, and after it's been hit by two missiles, you go ahead and you go fight the Haybot. You go jump and hit the big do not press button, which in Live and Reloaded was again replaced with a target. Because, uh, in Live and Reloaded, they, I don't know, they changed a lot of things that I didn't think made a whole lot of sense. And actually, Live and Reloaded seems more cartoony to me. At least with some of the character designs. I mean, yeah, it's more detailed, but certain things seem more cartoony in Live and Reloaded. But anyway, there's a big do not press button, which, uh, of course, you're supposed to push. And, um... Yeah, that's pretty much about that. Now we're just going to go to the next pillar here. Um. <clears throat> but yeah, um, I like how the Haybot's like a Terminator, basically. The whole concept of a robot with a uh, different uh, suit, only this time instead of being a human. He's hey, and they did their best Arnold impression for his voice. But yeah, um, his eyes look Christmassy because they're red and green. <laughs> Anyway, um, anyone else get reminded of Robot Wars, that old TV show that they used to show back uh, a few years, well, quite a while back, I can't remember exactly when, I think it was the early 2000s, but uh, don't quote me on that. But uh, Robot Wars was that show where people would build their own robots and fight them. Uh, just the yellow and black uh, streaks on the Haybot remind me of that. <clears throat> But, uh, they haven't shown that show in quite a while. That was another thing. Maybe I'll do a flashbacks about that. That might be a good idea. But, uh, anyway, so here comes the Haybot. Come on, you bastard. There we go. He's stupid enough to keep jumping in this water because, uh, you know how games are. The boss has got to be stupid enough to fall for the same trick over and over again. But this should be the final hit. And, uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump up. And uh, I missed the first time there, but I'll get it this time. Anyway, um, once he blows up, uh, the boss fight is over, but you still gotta escape this silo. Which was conveniently under the barn floor. We definitely showed him that time. But anyway, um, yeah, that's pretty much that. Uh, that's the Haybot for you. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do frying tonight, which is where you escape from this area. And then, uh, after that, we'll move on to, uh, Slam Dunk, and then finally Sunny Days, and then that will most likely be the end of this video. But anyways, um, in Live or Loaded, Frankie has a bolt that looks kind of like a penis that's not in this version. Also, in Live or Loaded, uh, the tape looks more like duct tape when you, uh, tape them back together. But, uh, yeah. That's pretty much that.
Anyway, let's see uh, Frankie get taped back together, because, you know, I've already kind of spoiled that by mentioning the duct tape in uh, Live and Reloaded, how it was duct tape. There you go. And in this, it's uh, masking tape, so... I guess we saw who uses the duct tape. But not in this version, because that's masking tape. Or packing tape. I'm not really sure. It's hard to tell. Can't tell if it's see-through or white. If it's see-through, it's really, really overlapped. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's packing tape. Okay. Alrighty, then. Well, that's that's that then, I guess. That's the kind of tape it is. Isn't that a great uh, thing to think about on video games, is what type of tape they used to tape a pitchfork back together who broke in half. Anyway, okay, let's go find the other way around. Gibberish. Fun stuff. But yeah, now, uh... What I don't get is, how the fuck did Frankie get out of here? Watch, he's like, yeah, I've gotta go! Then you just... Poof! How the fuck did he get out of there? Oh well, but I'd better start swimming. I don't know. I, 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 I'm not asking them to explain it because it's fucking Conker's Bad Fur Day. You don't need to explain it. But at the same time, you kind of need to explain it. Contradiction. It's a juicy contradiction. Sorry, I paused there, but uh, yeah, that was my bad. Anyways, and I'm gonna climb this fucking ladder. And, uh, get up there and, uh, escape from here. So, yeah, here we go. Anyway, um, also, this, the level title for this is Frying Tonight, which is something a squirrel also says in the war chapter later. I don't know why that is. I mean, is that, like, an expression, or is that an inside joke? I don't know. I remember one time, I actually knocked down all the wires from this location, but I think that was on Live and Reloaded, because it was a lot easier, because I had a crosshair. And that way I didn't have to go anywhere else. But, uh, it's a lot more difficult than Bad Fur Day. But yeah, um, anyway, so... Now we're just gonna climb up this ladder here. Take out the last three, and get out of here. And then we're gonna do Slam Dunk, which of course you just climb to the top of the map and ram yourself down into the B inside the... The B is in the letter, not the animal, but uh, the letter inside... the, the context-sensitive inside the uh, water tower. <clears throat> which is a pretty simple part, but uh, a lot of the times after I finish it, I die, which I did in this playthrough, so you'll see that later. Um, but that's when I'll meet Greg. So yeah, we'll get to see Greg in this, uh, video. I'll also show you where to get the ten lives after, uh, that. But yeah, then, uh, pretty much after you've knocked down all those, it's just a matter of waiting for the water to rise high enough to actually exit, so... Sometimes it takes a moment. And also, it would help if I would, uh, actually go towards the fucking exit, so... Right there. <clears throat> then uh, this is the first part in the actual game where you actually encounter this guy, the guy in the beginning whose stone you puked on. He's in a few different levels, um, just to help you get up there like that. Um, and he'll say stuff like, get off my stone, and bah. But yeah, anyway. <clears throat> That's where that money is. Um, I'll probably try to get all the money in the game in this entire playthrough just to kind of uh, Show people where it is if they don't know how to get all the money because there is an achievement for it on Rare Replay, so You know all two uh, 2310 I think it is uh, not including the million you get on the final level But yeah, um Ladders are fun kids but yeah, anyway, so now I'm gonna go do Slam Dunk. This part's actually pretty easy to not mess up, and I don't mess up on this playthrough. But I have messed up on it before where you get stung. The trick is to keep moving, except for with the first one, you gotta stop for just a second sometimes, because it just really depends on how he is. Um, if I would've kept moving, I think I would've just made it, but uh, just to be safe, sometimes it's better to just kind of slow down there for a second. Wait, and then just keep moving. Now, this second ladder, the trick is to just keep moving. Like, don't even stop. Uh, except for there. <laughs> uh, there I go contradicting myself. No, it's the final ladder that you don't stop at all. Otherwise, you're going to get stung. 
Because if you stop to wait for one, the other one will be right where you don't want him to be up here. So you just keep moving, go up onto the diving board, and you shouldn't have a problem there. Then of course you just fly out and press B and bam. It opens that gate, which uh if you're playing live and reloaded in that tunnel, there's a creepy baby doll thing that says, I'm going to get you. But uh, those aren't in Bad Fur Day. Those are only in Live and Reloaded. So that's another thing I liked about Live and Reloaded is they added in some more enemies like that. <clears throat> Although I don't like how they put the fucking imps everywhere. I mean, yeah, they were trying to add kind of a challenge because Live and Reloaded is far too easy in comparison to this one. But uh, it still has its moments, such as the tower chapter has some parts that are kind of irritating to do. It's not too bad, but, uh... And by tower, I mean the, uh, war tower, not the cogs tower. But anyway, so... I thought I'd be cool and try and, uh, fly down there from here rather than, uh, climbing down the ladder because... I was being stupid, and, uh, we get to meet Greg that way, so... There you go. See, I tried to land on the roof there because, uh, I... Didn't think of just going to the ladder right next to me. And it killed me. So, there you go. <clears throat> anyway, so here comes the Greg scene. This scene's actually a little bit cooler than Live and Reloaded. Because there's actually a lava pit and stuff you have to go across to get the tail. Although this scene, of course, is more censored in Live and Reloaded. Because uh, they censor the word shit in Live and Reloaded, so... If you listen to when Greg's muttering off to himself about how cats smell like shit, uh, you know, how they, how they piss everywhere, and their shit smells just awful all over my face. You can't hear that in Live and Reloaded. Well, it's beeped out in Live and Reloaded when he says shit, but still funny. But yeah, um, I love how this is their version of death, and they explain how you get lives this way. Aren't you a little shot to be a Grim Reaper? I don't know if that's supposed to be a reference to Star Wars. I don't think it is, but, you know, the aren't you a little short to be a stormtrooper. I don't think it's a reference, but knowing Rare, it very well could be. So, I mean, maybe. I don't know. <clears throat> Quills can have as many lives as they think they can get away with. Greg is probably, uh, my, well, one of my favorite versions of the Grim Reaper. Him and Grim from Billy and Mandy are probably the two best. Uh, Greg's kind of got a yellowy, more bone-like color, I guess, in Live and Reloaded, rather than just pure white, but I don't know. But uh, this is one of the few games that I know that actually explains your health and your lives, so... I mean, they took the time to do that, whereas in nowadays, they don't really. And again, lives aren't really a thing in modern games, which, you know, is both good and bad. I mean, uh, I, I didn't mind the concept, but at the same time, game overs are kind of a pain in the ass, so... You know, which is why, I, like I said, once we get to the war chapter, I'm definitely going to probably use the uh, 50 lives cheat for the uh, um, countdown. But that's quite a ways away, since this is only the second real chapter in the game, not including Windy, because Windy's the hub world. So, the next uh, video I do after this one is just going to be Pooh Cab, and I probably will include the Great Mighty Pooh as part of that. I mean, obviously, it's going to have more... Pooh Poo Cabin is a subsection of Windy, but, again, Windy is more of a hub world, so... <clears throat> anyway, so... That's the first time I've died so far. Let's keep count, shall we? If you can keep count of how many times I die through all the playthrough videos of this game, you win a gold sticker. But anyway... Uh... There's that. I'm not really going to give you a gold sticker, by the way, so it's not false advertising. Now that I've told you, it's true that I'm not going to give you a gold sticker. I'm sorry. I know that's incredibly disappointing, but, you know, no gold stickers. Sorry. Anyway, here's, uh, I'm going to go show you where the 10 lives tail is. Definitely comes in handy, especially if you're not using the cheat for 50 lives. But if you are using the cheat for 50 lives, and you're on this part of the story, you can just grab this tail here 
and get uh, 60 lives. So there you go. But as far as that goes, if you're playing on chapters mode, it's not there. At least as far as I remember, it's not. Uh, chapters mode, I don't think the tails are actually there at all, really. Um, but uh, that's partially why I'm uh, not doing chapters mode to do the playthrough. I'm doing an actual new game. Because also, uh, if you do chapters mode, uh, you don't meet Greg the first time you die. And there's, you know, a few things like that. But uh, really, it's minor differences. But, uh, <coughs> you know, to do a full playthrough, I feel you really do got to start from a new game. And uh, in this tunnel, there used to be those creepy baby doll. There's those creepy baby dolls on Live and Reloaded, which I mentioned previously. But uh, again, this isn't Live and Reloaded, so those aren't there. Anyway, um, here's a sunflower. Is it me, or is this scene kind of rapey? Well, not this scene, but this whole concept. I mean, you get bees to tickle her so that a flower can, or so that a bee can come over and have sex with her. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> it's conquer, so doesn't matter. No, doesn't matter. Don't matter. Context sensitive. No, doesn't matter. Not anymore. Alrighty, now to go collect the bees for the sunny days part of the chapter. Which again to me seems a little rapey, but all the funnier. Those are the pacifist bees, which you gotta collect five of. There's only actually five in this version, but I believe in Live and Reloaded they actually added in uh, a sixth set, so you don't need to get all of them. Uh, I guess they didn't want you to have to go up and get the one on the water tower, maybe, or things like that. They added in a sixth set down by that tunnel on the ground there, which is why I looked down there first, because I forgot that that's only in Live and Reloaded, so... Then I forgot that I hadn't got the one at the cheese location, so that's why uh, you see me double back there a couple times, but, uh, then I remembered, so, um, anyway, just gotta get the first set of bees there, and, uh, then move on to getting the second set of bees, which is the, probably the easiest to get, you just gotta know where to look, because, uh, if you're not looking right, you won't see it, if you just jump up, you'll see it, um, as you can, you can't really, there they are, see, they're just barely out of sight, so you just gotta jump up and get them, like that, then bring them over <clears throat> but as far as that goes uh, this part's really not that difficult either as long as you know where to look for the bees again in live reloaded I think it is even easier because they added in I think at least one more if not more sets of bees so you don't have to collect all of them plus it gives you a counter of how many you need so that's pretty nifty as well um, anyways uh, yeah, that's pretty much what it is with that. Um, like I said, this is a part I'd skip a lot as a kid because I didn't want my parents to see. Because uh, they were reluctant to get me the game anyway as a kid. But uh, anyway, as far as that goes, um, I, it's kind of funny how uh, you know they were okay with all the gore and everything, but uh, if they would have seen the sex scene with the bee and the flower, they would have uh, they would have flipped it. They would have flipped out. It's funny because how backwards we have it here, like, brutal violence is okay, whereas, uh, you know, sexuality is considerably taboo, but at the same time, I don't think any form of censorship is good. I mean, when I was younger, I was a little bit, I was for it to a point, but, uh, I'm completely against censorship. I honestly think that, uh, if we don't, uh, if we censor things, it can either A, take away from the message of it, and, uh, you know, also... It doesn't give us, uh, you know, the right to say and do what we want. If we start censoring something, then we'll have to start censoring more. And that's what I love about this game, too, is they don't try to be politically correct. And they didn't back in the 90s and 2000s. This was made in 2001. Um, it wasn't until the round 2010, or maybe a little bit earlier, that we started focusing on political correctness again. I mean, yeah, there was still a focus on it in, like, the early 2000s, like around... 2005, I'd say probably mid-2000s, actually, because early 2000s still had kind of the 90s vibe to it. But at the same time, uh, I really don't like how everything has to be all political correctness now and have all these trigger warnings and people worrying about getting offended. I mean, honestly, I, I, I personally think that uh, people are way too easily offended these days. And uh, a lot of people don't understand satire either. 
I mean, granted, I didn't used to understand satire when I was younger. I used to get super offended. But again, I've grown a lot as a person, so that's... Uh, Anyway, I digress. This isn't about that. This is about the game. Um, one thing I'll never do on this channel is try and uh, try and show bias. I mean, obviously, I do have my biases, and uh, censorship is one of them. I'm completely against it. But uh, I try to be as open as I can, and obviously, I don't go into any, like, political or shit like that. Because, honestly, things like that piss me off. Just because I don't agree with, really, any per particular political affiliation. So, it's better to just... Uh, not focus on that and just focus on the games and the random snack reviews and movies because that's way more fun and uh, not boring so everything else is boring not everything else but anyway um, this is the uh, fourth set of bees I think so just one more to go after this um, don't know why the hell I was going that way but anyway um, <clears throat> here we go and uh, this is the part where I kind of uh, fell short and forgot that I hadn't got the cheese one. So in a moment here, I'm going to take a moment and try and get some at the tunnel, which isn't there, of course. So, but I do remember. And it doesn't take me too long to figure it out. So, yeah, that's that. Alrighty then, so we're just getting really close to wrapping up the Barn Boys arc. So, uh, yeah, here goes. Uh, like I said, this is where I'm running to... Uh, Try and get the bees that aren't actually there because they were there in Live and Reloaded, but uh, not there no more. So, or rather, they weren't here back then. So, um, essentially, uh, yeah, that's what that is. So, then I'm like, oh shit, you know, I gotta go to the cheese place. Well, actually, at this point, I was thinking something along the lines of, huh, oh, what, where, where did I miss the bees? What the fuck? <laughs> because I know all their locations, but I just couldn't remember this one. But uh, then I remembered, oh yeah cheese place. Duh. So. Don't think I'd quite caught it yet, but uh, I think I remember right about, is it here? No? Um. Oh yeah, right here is where I think I remembered. It's hard to say, you know, like I said, I'm doing all my audio and post and... Uh, anyway, but nope, I didn't quite remember there. Now I remember. I realized I had just gone in a circle and uh, to no avail and I'm like oh fuck so yeah here goes <coughs> horn swoggle the safes look a lot more cartoony and live and reloaded too but yeah Anyway, and now I'm gonna go get the last set of bees and go get the flower fucked by a bee, which, you know, she doesn't agree to at first, but hey, she seemed to like it. So, you know, guess it's okay. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, here we go. Um, gate's closed again, in case you couldn't tell. I guess because Bert's not there anymore. But, uh, yeah. So, here we go. Sorry, I'm, I just can't really think of very uh, interesting things to say at this point uh, because this is, you know, the video is almost over for this uh, chapter. So, and I think I'm only gonna do one of these conquer playthrough videos a month because it takes me quite a while to make them. Um, my last one was on December 30th, and now I'm doing this one, which will be up uh, within the next couple of days. At least at the time of recording this will be up already, if you're hearing me say this, but... Also, that flower has erect nipples in Live and Reloaded, which uh, she does not have in this, so... Um, jumping on her tits can be kind of a pain in this version, too, because... Uh, sometimes it takes countless times to get... I think it only took me two or three times this time. But the first time I did it, it took me forever. So, yeah. Anyway. Either way, basically. Anyway. I'm rambling right now, but yeah. Cheers, old fella. I feel like a new man. So do I. Feels like a new man, huh? Okay. Tranny. <laughs> I'm not saying anything against any group of people, but fuck you if you get offended. 
Anyway, but yeah, here we go. Oh. Okay. Okay, no, it did still take me a few times, but hey. Um. Yeah. Can I get it there? No, 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 no. This time, this time. Pretty sure I get it this. No, no. This time. See what I mean? Bouncing on our tits can be a pain. There we go. Okay. So yeah, there's the money. Fajo with the money, as he's referred to by I don't know who, but yeah. But yeah, he grabbed the money, and then uh, that's all the money in Barn Boys. So again, uh, that whole tranny remark. I'm not saying anything against anyone. But, uh, that's just my sense of humor. Yeah, and that's about that. And I'm really fucking tired at the time of recording this audio, so. Yeah, there we go. Barn Boys. I enjoy if you like, uh, push the like. Yeah. Fugitive Red Eye, out.